This time on the Highland Woodworker. We'll give you an exclusive look inside one of my sculptured rocking chair classes. This is part of my bucket list. I really had never used a rasp until this week. In addition to building the chair, I've learned a number of new skills as well. Then, learn about a high-tech way Highland Woodworking is bringing their classes right to your own shop. Plus, Popular Woodworking Magazine will dazzle you with an amazing card trick that can really come in handy when making bridle joints on a bandsaw. These stories and more, this time on the Highland Woodworker. Hello, I'm Charles Brock and I'm a Highland Woodworker. Since 1978, Highland Woodworking has been providing the best and fine woodworking tools and a great woodworking education. We are focusing this episode on the importance of learning the craft of woodworking. In the last episode, I gave you a tour of my shop and this time we'll take you inside one of my rocker classes that was captured a while back. Plus, learn about a new way that Highland Woodworking can deliver a great woodworking education right to your shop. Today, we're going to step into a class in Spring Hill, Tennessee, where uh, I have a shop. You'll get to see them, I think it's on the uh, fourth day. They're attaching arms and, uh, and working on headrest and working on spindles. Making the spindles, uh, I thought that was probably going to be like the hardest thing to do. Um, and it turns out, at least for me, it, it was pretty straightforward and easy and you get into the rhythm of making those and it's just really satisfying to see those get shaped and sculpted. Teaching the Sculptured Rocker is really a thrill. I've taught that class over 60 times. I uh, taught it in several states. Early on, uh, I would travel and, and, and teach the class. It was a seven-day class, uh, which was really a marathon. But now I've got it down to six days, and for the probably the last uh, seven or eight years, I have taught it in my own shop. It's been the best class that I have ever taken. A lot of camaraderie, the, all the guys here are great. Instruction is superb, and uh, it's, it's just what I wanted. I had a little apprehensive that uh, I didn't have the right background and experience to be able to make the chair, and my family finally encouraged me to sign up, and here I am. It's been a great class. We've been uh, watching the Highland Woodworker for years. Um, my father's been following Chuck. I've been following Chuck more recently and he's always wanted to build a sculpture rocker. So I invited him here sort of as a, a Father's Day gift and we've been building two chairs together all week. It's been perfect. Yeah. You know, we, we have a lot of general layout experience. We've done a lot of woodworking, but the transition to the sculpture part was intimidating on the drive here. And Chuck got us through it, you know, on the first day and started making down, breaking down mental barriers. And uh, it's all just a step-by-step -step process now. It, it's not just woodworking. It's, great deal of artistry and putting it together so it flows. A lot of woodworking is a box of different types, different sizes, uh, different purposes. But uh, what I do is I teach them how to do joinery and then how to become kind of an artist between point A and point B. Uh, how to make some lines flow, how to do roundovers by hand, how to crown a surface, how to make some beautiful soft lines and some hard lines. Uh, it's all kind of a challenge, but there's a process. And I'm really devoted uh, my time as a professional and to being able to teach that process. This was my next step in growth to, uh, to learning furniture making. I really had never used a rasp until this week. So it's really been very educational. Uh, in addition to building the chair, I've learned a number of new skills as well. I've got to bore some holes here. So we can set that up real quick and do it. I can start it up. And at about 300 RPM, can do this 
And if, if you'll stand right over there, you can tell me uh, maybe how much further I've got to go. Three right? millimeters, two, one. All right, we're there. It's all right to end up down here someplace letting that kind of round over, okay? Mm -hmm. it's, it's all right to do that. We need to look at our, uh, our arm blanks. We've got to decide which is going to be right and which is going to be left. Of course, the, the right one is going to be uh, if you're, as if you were sitting in the chair, it's going to go from, from the right front leg up to the right arm stem right here and the left over here. Look at the grain and uh, kind of uh, get an idea of what it might look like with the particular stock that you have. See if, and some of you ha might have some um, things, some considerations. Uh, the considerations might be uh, that you've got a knot someplace, or you've got something that you want to, to work around. It's so important to teach now because the schools are no longer teaching shop. Uh, very rare these days. So, uh, the apprenticeship program that they had in Europe is long gone, and people learn uh, from many different sources. Having a hands-on class where you can come in and learn uh, a lot on kind of a spiral curriculum. It's methodical, and if you listen to what you're shown and watch the demonstrations, you get there pretty quickly. When they leave, they've got all the parts that are joined together kind of in a, a knockdown fashion. The, the joints will fit, uh, they've got some screws that they can run in and, uh, and build the chair. They can also take the screws out still, and since everything's not glued up except for the seat, uh, they can take it apart, take it home, and finish all the shaping and sanding. The biggest challenge now is trying to figure out how to get all the pieces back to Seattle and get them put together. I want them to leave with the knowledge of how to go forward and finish their rocker, uh, and I want them to understand how to use the tools and to understand the concepts that uh, make this such a special piece that uh, is gonna really be part of their legacy as well as mine. I get to see all these grand chairs and that's a joy when they send me a picture. If you ever wanna do something for yourself, your bucket list. I'm in my 70s and this is part of my bucket list to, to, to get something like this done. It, it's definitely worthwhile. Something you wanna give yourself as a present. COVID-19 um, has had a big impact upon uh, teachers like myself uh, all over the world. Uh, people can't really come or maybe are, are a little distrustful of, of coming and uh, facing the possibilities of coming to your shop, traveling and all those things. Uh, I found that I was having some cancellations. And so uh, I thought about it and thought, well, why can't I take the sculptured rocker class to them instead of them coming to me. The technology today is amazing. And if we apply that technology, then we can have a really good bonding relationship uh, between woodworking teacher and student. We delivered a sculptured rocker class in six installments. I think it was every Tuesday night we got together for a couple of hours and all the people that were participating in that uh, class of pioneers got their chairs together and I saw that this would work. Professional audio and video delivered straight to them uh, made it almost the virtual classroom almost like my classroom. I would do the demos, answer questions, uh, even contact them during the week. And uh, using FaceTime, I could see what they were doing. We could have kind of a, a personal bench session. Uh, there's so much that can be done with this, this technology. Well, in talking to uh, the people at Highland Woodworking, uh, we decided, all right, this is an opportunity. They had to, of course, close down the classes on their campus that had been going on since, uh, I think, the 1980s. 
And there was an opportunity there for us to use this technology and deliver classes to students anywhere in the world uh, at their home or their shop. And the education between Highland Woodworking and the woodworking public uh, could continue. It's called Highland Woodworking Live Online Classroom. Take a look, register, take a chance. I think they will make you smile. Coming up, Popwood is on deck to reveal the secret to making bridal joints on a bandsaw. Plus, find out how the sculptured rocker seat is laid out before it gets that iconic smile. Stick around, you're watching The Highland Woodwork. I'm just an average down-to-earth woodworker. On a scale of one to 10, I'm probably about a five. But one place I score a perfect 10 is right here, and I plan on keeping all 10. That's why I have a saw stop table saw, and there's more. Plenty of power, superior dust collection, and absolute accuracy. These features have made it the best selling cabinet saw in America. Let Highland Woodworking help you put a saw stop in your shop. Meet the Bora Centipede, the lightweight and portable workshop table that supports up to 3,000 pounds, stores in a small space for tight shops, and opens into a work table to bring your work to a comfortable height. This makes the perfect companion for your track saw. Comes with X cups and hold downs to secure your work. Upgrade your shop today. For 35 years, Lee has manufactured the world's best joinery jigs. From our award-winning dovetail jigs and mortise and tenon jigs, to newer innovations like router table jigs. Easily add strong, beautiful joinery to your woodworking pieces, like half-blind dovetails, box joints, mortise and tenon joints, and through dovetails. Lee, simply the easiest and most versatile router joinery jigs. I've been using Forest products for years. You know, they're the maker of the Woodworker 2 saw blade. Gives great cuts on your table saw every time. Now, I have a chop master for my miter saw. I have a dense piece of two by two walnut, and as you see, it cuts like butter, leaving clean cuts at 90 degrees. Forest, the cuts will make you smile every time. Hi, I'm Andrew with Popular Woodworking, and today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite card tricks. Now, it's not going to win you any money, but it is going to help you cut one of my favorite joints, and that's a bridal joint. A bridal joint is made up of two pieces. You've got your tongue and your mouth. Fit together, you've got a ton of mechanical strength and a lot of glue surface. That once you glue this joint up, it's going to be super strong. Now to cut this joint, we're going to be doing it on the bandsaw, and we'll actually be using the playing cards as shims for the fence. In addition to your bandsaw and your playing cards, you're also going to need a couple of stop locks for your fence, and a stop lock for your cut. You'll need some clamps to clamp all those in place, and of course, your safety gear. Let's head over to the bandsaw and get started. First, I'm going to use my fence to set up my first cut. 
Now this is what sets up the sides of the mouth. Uh, and really what I'm aiming for in bridle joints is uh, dividing the piece into thirds. Once I've got my uh, fence locked in, I'm gonna take a miter gauge and set my uh, cut block depth. I'm going to add my fence stop blocks. Now these blocks don't really play any part on the first cut, but they're essential on the second cut. And for these, I'm just using a couple of square pieces of wood and I clamp them to the table. So with that all set up, we'll fire up the bandsaw and make our first cut. With your first cut made, you just flip over your piece and make your second cut. That'll give you a perfectly centered mouth. Now you've got two cut lines in your piece. What I do is take a little stack of playing cards to use as shims. So I slide them in there to figure out the kerf of the blade. This looks like five cards works pretty well here. Then I take five cards and put them between the fence and the fence stop locks in both the front and the back. With that set up, I can make my cut for the tongue on the second piece. Again, it's just like you did on the first piece. All the way through, stop, flip it, and then stop again. Then I remove the stop locks from behind the fence, but I keep the depth block there. I use the miter gauge to cut the cheeks of my tongue piece. I move the fence over and use it as a stop in combination with the miter gauge. That way I've got nice square shoulders. With the fence still out of the way, I'll use the bandsaw to cut out most of the waste in my groove. With that all done, put your joint together and see how it fits. There you have it, a nice fitting bridle joint. I'm Andrew with Popular Woodworking, and we'll see you next time. Coming up, saving a seat. How I was taught a big lesson by someone on the other side of the bench. Don't go anywhere. You're watching The Highland Woodworker. Highland Woodworking stocks a wide selection of Rikon power tools known for their innovative design and rugged durability. Highland has sold thousands of Rikon's industry-leading bandsaws with sizes to fit every woodworking need, from the compact affordable 10-inch model to competitively priced 14 and 18-inch models. Shop us also for Rikon's reliable planers, lathes, and professional low-speed grinder, all with an exceptional five-year warranty. Rikon. Power tools. Whiteside Machine Company has been in business for over 30 years providing customers with quality router bits. Fine Woodworking Magazine has declared Whiteside router bits best overall and best value when compared against 17 other brands. No matter the router application, they have the type and profile of carbide router bit you need. When you put a Whiteside router bit to work in your shop, it is guaranteed to make you smile. Well, this is the magic moment when my masterpiece or your masterpiece comes in contact with masterpiece wood finish oil. It just comes alive. This is a great piece of wood and it's going to just look brilliant. Masterpiece wood finish cause it's your masterpiece. If you can't make it to Highland Woodworking in Atlanta, Georgia, you can shop online at highlandwoodworking.com. They're great at getting what you want to your shop quick. Let Highland's legendary wood slicer resaw blade help make it easy for you to get great results sawing thick lumber into thinner boards. The wood slicer is designed to cut much faster, smoother, and quieter than ordinary bandsaw blades. You'll be amazed at how smooth a surface you'll get with a wood slicer. Its variable tooth pattern greatly reduces noise and vibration. 
Order a wood slicer from Highland Woodworking for your bandsaw today. Well, what turned out to be my best day as a woodworker in many ways was also my worst day as a woodworker. Uh, rolled out of bed at six in the morning, went out and had a little bit of time before I got ready to go off and teach one of my final days of uh, elementary school. And so I wanted to take a sled, a rocker sled, out of a form and I grabbed a chisel to uh, get a glue block off that had kind of hung up and I pried it, it came off very quickly and the chisel uh, stuck in my hand right there. And I've got a scar to prove it. Had to go to the hospital, uh, they gave me a bunch of stitches, filled me full of a little bit of painkiller because it hurt, sharp chisel and a weak hand. So I'm sitting on my couch, couldn't go to work that day, I'm sitting on my couch at about 2.30 in the afternoon, the phone rings, and gosh, it was Highland Woodworking. It was their education director, and he said, hey, we've seen a picture of your chair. Uh, Sam can't come teach uh, the classes anymore, and we'd like for you to teach that chair this summer if you'd like. Well, the whole idea of it kind of petrified me, but I thought, okay, yes, and so as summer came, I was preparing to go up there and teach this class. And um, as you know, I'm not Sam Maloof. Uh, Charles Brock and the class filled up with folks and uh, people were all around wanting to know my sage wisdom, which I knew uh, was probably lacking in, in many ways. Well. Uh, I was excited about it nonetheless, and um, about uh, a week before going up to teach the class, um, I decided instead of doing um, a two-board uh, seat that would just be joined in the middle, uh, that wouldn't have uh, a bunch of boards with bevels to make a coopered seat, I, like I had been doing, I decided I was going to do a coopered seat. And I worked it all out in my mind and felt very secure about it. I milled up all the stock and everything. Um, I was going to use a domino to put it together. I knew exactly what I was going to do. Wrong. Well, got up there and I started explaining this seat and showing them how the boards were to go together. Well, um, there are some bevels here. Uh, well, let's move to this one. There are some bevels here. Uh, board number three has bevels on the corner, and, and then uh, board number two and board number four, they have bevels out here. And so I'm explaining uh, how to take this board number three, the center board, and how to use it as a template to lay out boards two and four. When lo and behold, you never know who's going to do the learning and who's going to do the teaching. But in this case, uh, I was going to tell them to take uh, uh, board number two and board number four and trace their sides, take it to the bandsaw and cut it. At the moment of explaining how to trace boards two and four, I realized I really didn't have a firm understanding of what I was about to explain. Well, I had these big pictures of Sam Maloof looking at me on the wall. I had 30 people from all over the United States uh, looking at me, wanting to know how to do it. And I had a realization here that if I copied the sides of board number three or the edge of board number three onto two and four the way they were, because I had bevels on them, they were going to sit on the bandsaw at three degrees. And when I made the bandsaw cut, it was going to cause this side over here to uh, kind of slope off at an angle, which would have not been good for the project. It just would not have worked out to be something like this. So uh, I looked up for just a second and I saw a mouth in the back of the room that looked at me and just said, swap the boards. 
so seamlessly. I said, pick up board number two and move it over here and replace board number four. And then you can trace board number three onto their sides and it'll sit flat at the bandsaw. Well, I realized that swapping the boards was a great part of the solution because now I can trace the edge of the board, turn it sideways on the bandsaw, and then I end up with this cut, which is nice and straight across the front and just perfect uh, for making this, this seat. Only problem was, uh, what do I do back here? If I swap the board and I mark it all the way to the back of the seat bowl, then I'm going to cut off part of the deck back here. Well, very quickly, I realized all I needed to do was pull seat board number two back, mark it to the bottom of the seat bowl, then push it forward and finish marking it to the front. Take it to the bandsaw, make the cut, and this is what it leaves. A, a great solution. It may have been that the uh, information came from a student who knew something that I didn't know. Or it could have been uh, the Maloof that was still in the room uh, with those giant pictures. It's kind of a, an interesting thought. Or it could have been divine guidance. You never know who the teacher is and who the learner is. At that point, I was still learning. There are a lot of different choices in sliding miter saws. I've had several of them, but when I was ready for the best, I took a look at Festool Capex 120 sliding miter saw, and guess what? It proves itself to me with every single cut. Precision starts with dual lasers, and they are locked right in on that line. And so I know that I'm going to get a very precise cut. The Festool Capex 120 is designed so that you can put it against the wall if you would like because the head, which is this part here, just slides forward. There's nothing back here to run into a wall. So that gives me mobility all around the shop. The Festool Miterfast is standard equipment and it allows you to uh, identify an angle and set the saw to that angle. <laughs> they even have great easy storage here so you won't lose it if you take it out to the job site. I really like the versatility of things like the built-in hold down. Uh, that is just fabulous. You can use it on either side. And it's very easy to adjust it to cut miters. Look at that. And there stops at 90 degrees, 45 degrees and such. Everything that you would need to be able to make precision cuts with a miter saw. Plus, you have 12 inches of cut here and under the blade, you can cut up to four and five eighths inches of stock. Now, that is quite beefy but it has a very lightweight design at just over 47 pounds for the saw here. One of the many great features of this saw is you've got a cart on wheels available, very lightweight, but I mean sturdy, and you've got these extensions. You've got a right and a left. You don't always have to put both extensions on, but let me show you how easy. This is just wonderful, and it's still not everything. I am going to sit it into this groove, and I'm going to back it up just a little bit off of the uh, fence here, tighten it up.
Now, I've got this great extension. I've got that one too, but that's not everything. Look at this. Okay. Uh, if you can see this right here, this one is not uh, level with the saw. All right. Uh, you would have to just fool around with other saws and other types of extensions, but watch this. Uh, by using, moving this leg in and out, you can level it up, tighten it up, And very quickly, have the perfect work surface. Put a long board up here, and there won't be binding and things that seem to cause you all kinds of angst, like you have with most other saws and their extensions. And look how long they are. Plus, you've got a guide here that you can set, flip down, and make repeatable cuts. Tell you what, there's nothing like the quality of a Festool Capex sliding miter saw. Wow, it's the star of my shop. your woodworking experience. Sign up for Wood News Online, a monthly newsletter showcasing the latest news, tips, and classes Highland Woodworking has to offer. By signing up, you'll receive the latest episode of the Highland Woodworker, special store promotions, and Wood News Online delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up today. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to check us out on social media. Until next time, I'm Charles Brock and I'm a Highland Woodworker.